Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to speak a little bit about evaporation and condensation. Now, if you'll remember back to the states of matter video, we've already met both of these terms. Evaporation just means boiling of water, so when a water turns from a liquid to a gas, and condensation is the other way around when you're turning from a gas to a liquid. So what can actually happen with evaporation? So if let's say that this is some body of water, uh, there we go, some body of water here, now, within this body of water, you have, of course, water molecules. And rather than draw the whole molecules out, you know that these are H2O. We're just going to draw them as these little dots. Okay. Now, when we raise the temperature high enough, these molecules, so I'm just going to highlight this one, these molecules will start to buzz around. Okay, so they start to get more energetic, they start to buzz around faster and faster and faster, and eventually they're buzzing around so fast that they leave. So they've got so much energy that they don't have to be stuck in the water anymore, or in the container. And so this as well, it can leave. This one can be buzzing around and it can leave. And that process is known as evaporation. So the process of this leaving means that we are turning from a liquid because in the container we are a liquid and once you leave the container and remember if you fill up the space where you are that is a gas so that is evaporation okay and it requires heat and of course importantly if these are just allowed where they are and they cool down they could re-enter the water but in most uh, scenarios you will have enough airflow that these water molecules will actually, let's show that, will actually leave and they won't ever come back. So they'll leave and they won't ever come back. And that means that the amount of water in this bowl or whatever container it is, is going to go down and down and down and down and down. Okay, now what's important here is that evaporation is not the same thing as boiling. So not boiling. There is a key difference. Because if you think about it, water will evaporate if you leave it in a bowl uh, in normal room temperature. Whereas water will not boil like it does in a kettle at normal room temperature. It won't get that hot. And so there is a key difference. Evaporation is when water turns from a liquid to a gas without boiling. So it's not boiling. Okay, so this will occur at most temperatures. Obviously, if you go to freezing, it's not going to occur because you then freeze the water. Okay, but this is going to carry on slowly and slowly and slowly until all the water in this container has gone. Okay, now importantly, there are many different scenarios where we use evaporation um, in order to cool things down. So evaporation, evaporation or cooling. Now one very common example is when we sweat. But I'm just going to explain the theory first. So evaporation involves removing the molecules of water which are moving the fastest. So fastest molecules, um, they basically turn into a gas. Okay, so they're now gone. Now these molecules that are moving the fastest, that means they have the most kinetic energy. So the highest amount of kinetic energy. Now when they leave in the form of a gas, that means the average average kinetic energy has gone down. Because if you think, if all the water that you have has a certain kinetic energy, um, a certain average kinetic energy that is, the ones which are moving the fastest are contributing to that average. If you remove them, then your average has gone down. Now your kinetic energy of um, water molecules is completely related to its temperature and that means that the temperature is also reduced. Temperature is also reduced. So the removal of these fast moving molecules means that the kinetic energy has gone down and therefore the temperature has gone down. Okay, so when we sweat, we obviously secrete some water or some sweat which is water with salt in it. 
Now this water is on the, is on the surface of our skin now and is open to the environment and it can evaporate. When this water evaporates, it removes um, some of the water from our body. That means the average kinetic energy goes down because the water is no longer there. And that means it's also taking away a lot of the heat. So heat is removed and that is why sweating happens when we are hot or when we exercise, etc. And it will end up cooling us down. Now there are factors affecting how fast something will evaporate. And so let's have a look at those now. So these factors affect how fast something will evaporate. Well, first of all, you are going to have the temperature. So if something is really cold, that means that less water molecules are going to have enough kinetic energy in order to evaporate. So temperature, a higher temperature, so let's say higher temp equals higher levels of evaporation. So higher temp, higher evaporation, okay? Another one is going to be airflow. Airflow. Now, if we have a look at this example here, remember I said that in a well-circulated room, these water molecules will be able to move away, which means that they won't move back into the container of water. If we don't have good airflow, these just stay where they are and they might cool down and they'll go back in and then they'll go back out and go back in. And that means that effectively we're not reducing the amount of water as much as we should be because we are re-adding the water. Whereas if all of that water being evaporated has moved away, that means that no water is being re-added to the container and so it will go down quicker. So higher airflow, airflow will also equal higher evaporation. Okay. And lastly, but potentially the most important one, is surface area. So, surface area. Now, again, a higher surface area, I'm just going to say SA there, is equal to a higher level of evaporation. So the higher surface area, the more will evaporate. And let me just demonstrate that really quickly with, with another diagram. If you had a container of water like this in a test tube, and you had water molecules all in there, blah, 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 blah. Well, only the water molecules, which are up the top here, so maybe this one, only this one is really facing the air. All the other ones are down here, and they can't evaporate because there's water above them. So this one will be able to fly out, and then only after that one's gone, the level will go down, and then this one could fly out after. Whereas if we take a look at our original diagram, all of these are exposed to the air at the same time, and so if they want to, they can all leave at the same time. And that means a higher rate of evaporation. Now let's take a look at condensation. Okay, move on to the next page, here we go. Condensation. Now condensation is of course pretty much the opposite of evaporation. So if we have this surface here, uh, a really common one is a mirror. So let's say that this is like the surface of a cold mirror in a bathroom. If we have our water molecules, which they may have already been evaporated, so they're in the air, okay, and they're buzzing around. Let's just take this guy here. Now this guy's buzzing around, buzzing around. Now it hits the cold surface, and now it's not going to be a gas anymore. It's going to stay there and it's going to form a water droplet. So this will form droplets. And you would have seen that in your bathroom, especially when you've had a hot shower, because remember, uh, if you raise the temperature, so in a hot shower, you've already increased the temperature, evaporation will increase, and so you'll get loads of water in the air. When that hits the cold surface, we're going to get condensation. So when we form our liquid, that is our condensation. Okay, so forming this droplet. Now, um, that's probably the best example when we have hot water uh, creating steam somewhere. Even when we boil a kettle in a kitchen, the steamy kitchen um, will cause condensation to occur on the windows. And so there are various factors which affect the rate of condensation also. Factors. There we go. Now, one of them, which is exactly the same as above with 
evaporation is going to be our surface area. And again, a high surface area will give us fast or a high rate of condensation. Okay, so high surface area will give us a high rate of condensation. There goes neat in the upper bit. Okay, right, the next one is going to be the temperature. So temperature again. Let's just start off with the air temperature. If we have high temperatures, that means we are going to have more water in the air. And that means that when that water comes in contact with the surface, we are going to get high levels of condensation. If there's barely any water in the air, like in a normal room, you haven't boiled a kettle, you haven't had a shower, condensation is reduced. So you're not going to get as much or as high a rate of condensation. So that's absolutely true. That is the same as with evaporation. The different one is surface temperature. Surface temperature. So now we're talking about pretty much the temperature of our mirror or our windows in our kitchen. Okay. So if the temperature of this mirror was really hot, that means that it wouldn't really persuade the droplets of water to turn back into a liquid because well, it's given them enough energy, they can still buzz around and do their thing. Whereas if this is really, really cold, that means that it's taken all the kinetic energy out of the, the water. Um, it can't buzz around anymore as a gas, so it turns back into a liquid droplet. So if we have a lower surface temperature, I'm just going to write S temperature, that will also give us a higher rate of condensation. Okay, and that's because, of course, that is then removing the kinetic energy from the water droplets. Okay, so of course, a big flat mirror, obviously you've got loads of space for water droplets to hit it, meaning higher condensation. If the temperature is high, then that means that uh, we're going to have more water in the air. And if the surface temperature is low, that means that we're going to persuade the water in the air to turn back into a liquid. Okay, so that was just a brief overview. I hope that's helped. Um, make sure you can understand what condensation and evaporation are and the factors that affect them. And um, specifically, highlight the fact that evaporation is not the same as boiling, even though it is still liquid turning into a gas. Okay, so I hope that's helped. Um, if you do have any questions on that, please do feel free to use the link below to send me a direct email or comment in the box and I'll get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.